Hello, I'm Robert Ellsberg, the publisher of Orbis Books. It's a pleasure today to be here with one of our authors, David Rico, who is the author of this new book, Wholeness and Holiness, How to Be Sane, Spiritual, and Saintly. Uh, David Rico is a psychotherapist. He is a writer, many books, uh, a retreat leader, uh, workshop uh, uh, that he gives uh, all, in many uh, centers. And uh, this is a really interesting book to me because I, I have actually spent a lot of my life thinking about saints and saintliness and written about that. Uh, but uh, he does something interesting in this book, which is to connect saintliness on a kind of continuum with a process that begins with uh, psychological well-being or sanity, if you want to call it, uh, and moves in the direction of something larger than just one's own uh, health or spiritual, you know, psychological well-being in the sense of spirituality uh, before pointing in the direction and this journey that leads toward uh, even something bigger that he calls uh, holiness or, or saintliness here. Uh, so Dave, I'd, I'd really be interested to uh, hear from you about how you, how you would define those different kinds of stages and, and, and how they are related. Uh, thank you. And for sanity, I'm referring to basic well-being, to live your life in a way that does not um, put you in a position where you're ruled by your anxieties or by your cravings. And you might say that what's in Psychology 101 textbook that gives you kind of a profile of psychological health. Mm -hmm. And I call that sanity in the book. I'm trying to uh, have the three words start with the same letter, sanity, spirituality, sanctity. And then secondly, spirituality is, as you said, um, the something more than just our own equilibrium, our own 98.6 way of living in the world, of dealing with all its stresses. Instead, something happens in us. We can't make it happen. It happens all by itself. In Buddhism, it's called bodhicitta. The, the sudden awakening to a new destiny I want to be more than just a person of well-being. I want to be a person who wills well-being for all people. And so a, a kind of um, opening and widening happens in your psyche. And you find yourself um, interested in a new kind of destiny, a co-creating of a world of justice, peace, and love, rather than I just want to be fair, I just want to be loving toward my inner circle, I just want to be peaceful in my own life. Now we want these for more than ourselves. That is the, shall we say, second stage on the path of um, heroic wholeness. Mm. And most of the uh, new age or even recent books attempt to, including my own, attempt to integrate the psychological and the spiritual. And by now we have a good sense of what that looks like that we want to be healthy and whole. But I thought to myself, going back to my um, Catholic childhood, quote, we're all called to be saints. And I thought, well, let's expand even beyond the more mm -hmm. to the most. What's the most that a human can be? And that's a saint. And by saint, I mean, 
not only wholeness, but holiness. Holiness referring to a, a consecration of yourself to um, be in the world as a person of heroic service and heroic generosity. Mm. And it occurred to me that we, we can't really make ourselves do that, but when the opportunity comes along, as it occasionally does, we act with even more than spiritual consciousness, we act with um, a, a bigger generosity, a bigger sense of service. What we saw, for instance, in a person like Dorothy Day or Thomas Merton, you could tell that they had gone beyond just spiritual practice. They felt a, um, they felt that they were consecrated to the world as its uh, servant, its ambassador of light from the heart of Christ. And um, this heart could also be the heart of the whole universe. It's not limited to the Christian metaphor. So that's what my book is about. It tries to uh, show what each of the three, sanity, spirituality, and sanctity, look like. And it tries to bring them all together. We're not going to be saintly every minute. Mm -hmm. But occasionally, we will step up to the plate of saintliness, do something really special, and of course, that only happens when we've said yes to a, a, a very special grace from the Holy Spirit. Mm. And um, when you put that together with wholesome living and spiritual wholeness, uh, it makes for a beautiful sojourn on this planet. Well, I think that your book is really very helpful in a lot of ways. Uh, uh, it may be that it will appeal to uh, people who read books on self-help and self-improvement and uh, who haven't you know, contemplated that there is that other kind of dimension or wouldn't think that that uh, applies to ordinary people. But I think it also uh, is helpful to those who've been raised and schooled in uh, you know, veneration of saints uh, because uh, we tend to think of them as, uh, as kind of finished products uh, who, uh, without some sense of, of the kind of journey uh, that they underwent to uh, achieve that. Um, of course, the, maybe your upbringing as, as a Catholic too, and you, you say you're familiar with that kind of idea that the church says that we are called, that's what we are called to. Uh, but I wonder if somebody who doesn't come out of that tradition, uh, you think would, would recognize or feel some kind of uh, something impelling them to, 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 to go to, toward something more and something bigger. Uh, and what, what would that be? I think it could happen to anyone. You don't have to come from a theistic background to have a sense of calling. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're referring to, that occasionally um, we are called to act in a way that's bigger than ever we imagined we could do. Like we find a bigger courage in ourselves than we ever thought we had. And we step right up and we act courageously uh, or lovingly or uh, compassionately. And we don't know where it came from. That in the Christian view would be a way of saying it's that you were touched by grace. Mm -hmm. And you said yes to it. And that unconditional yes to the possibility that sometimes 
I will be more than I usually am. Mm. Just, just being open to that is the equivalent of being up for center. Mm. And I don't mean uh, yeah, canonization. Or canonized, you know, okay. I just mean, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think that uh, a thing that is interesting to me too on this kind of journey is to, uh, because it, it provides a way of kind of metabolizing, if you want to use that word, uh, suffering and pain, uh, obstacles, setbacks, uh, that in certain kinds of self-help you know, books, the goal is to minimize uh, you know, suffering, minimize uh, bad things that might happen to you. Uh, and the, in the kind of journey that you're the path that you, you describe, uh, it accepts the fact that, that, that suffering, hardship, pain are, are part of that process. But perhaps we uh, respond to that in a different way, depending on whether we're dealing with it on the level of psychological well being, spirituality, or holiness. Mm. Yes, you, you, uh, you activate in different ways. And I think it's expressed very well in that uh, famous uh, prayer of Reinhold Niebuhr, which he wrote in 1943 during World War II. Um, May I have the grace of serenity to accept the things I can't change, to have courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. Um, those three apply to all three Mm -hmm. my topics so there's a way you do that psychologically there's a way you do it spiritually and then there's a way you do it um in a in a saintly way um that takes you um beyond the other two and um i just think it's a wonderful good news Mm -hmm. uh, we were built for mighty freight, mm -hmm. as the poem says, and that we're not um, sometimes allowing ourselves to see how far we can go. I'm thinking of a poem by Emily Dickinson. It's the first line says it all. We never know how high we are. I'm sorry. We never we never... Close we are. We never know how high we are. Uh -huh. And when you mentioned saints, I wanted to just add one more thing. Um, of course, we looked at statues and pictures of saints uh, in childhood and now in churches, and we think of them as um, wonderful models for uh, a saintly way of living. But I'm going one step further in the book, and I'm showing that all of those saints are also mirrors of what's potentially in us. Mm -hmm. So we're not just imitating them. We're not just asking them for the favor, the grace of being like them. We are actually saying, I am you, and you are me. Mm -hmm. So when I look at St. Therese, the little flower, I'm not just seeing um, the saint who represents humility and um, loving kindness toward humanity. I'm finding that in myself. Mm -hmm. And so the shrine that holds the picture of the saint is actually holding the mirror to the deepest part of myself. Mm. I guess a, a certain amount of your work is on the on the ground level, so to speak, as a psychotherapist. Uh, but in the beginning of the book, uh, you told a story of uh, a woman who, a patient who had been holding on to uh, a lot of of uh, pain from mistreatment that she received at the hands of her siblings as she was growing up. And you described uh, a kind of, you were trying to help her to get to a certain kind of point. And then she sort of surpassed your expectations. 
Uh, you want to say a little bit about that? Yes, um, it was um, a wonderful moment because I simply asked her to uh, speak about her pain to each of her siblings. She was kind of in a Cinderella situation with them. And that's all I asked her to do. But instead, she went beyond that. Once again, the spiritual, the saintly is the more. <clears throat> and she started uh, wishing each one well. She started um, without my prompting. And I was just sitting there and I was just so impressed. And, uh, it was like a holy moment. Mm -hmm because she had turned the story of all their harshness toward her into a compassionate, loving kindness instead of revenge. Mm -hmm. She wasn't talking about how I'm gonna get back at you. She was mm -hmm. saying, now I hope that you're living a life uh, in which you no longer do this hands in which you find love from others. And the fact that she did this all on her own, I thought, this is a moment of grace. And this is what it looks like when you go beyond just becoming healthier to becoming holier. Mm -hmm. I, I like that story very much uh, because it, it, it really did show that um, Holiness is not just something that you know, famous saints do, the kind of uh, heroic things that they accomplished. I, I worked with uh, Dorothy Day for some years, a person that you refer to a lot. And, and we think of her a lot in terms of the, of the great deeds that she did, both in serving the poor, but also in going to jail and protest against uh, nuclear weapons or the solidarity with the farm workers or whatever. But I, I edited her journals and and that's where, and you referred to, to St. Teresa of Lisieux too, where I, I realized how much the, uh, the real arena for holiness for her was in just ordinary daily life. It was mm -hmm. in uh, practicing patience, uh, controlling her own temper, uh, being more patient with and forgiving toward people around her. And that that was something that was, you know, the, the, just the workshop of her daily life uh, as kind of Therese, her favorite saint ha happened to be, you know, indicated was a kind of path to holiness and that, and that you know, the practice of, of charity or love, selflessness in these very small ways was what uh, equipped her for the kind of, you know, acting on the, the stage of history. But we often, when we look at the saints, we only jump right to, 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 the, to the big things, founded a religious order or something like that. And we don't kind of deal with how, how do they practice that, you know, by forgiving the person, you know, right next to them, loving the person right next to them who wasn't necessarily all that lovable. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, I really enjoyed uh, the, the book that it is it's really very concise. Uh, the chapters are short. It is a really kind of practical uh, guidebook uh, that is something that you, once you've finished, you want to go back to the beginning and start all, all over again. Uh, so I, I thank you very much uh, for the gift of this book. Uh, again, I'll hold it the right way. Uh, Wholeness and Holiness, uh, which I highly recommend. Uh, I hope you'll uh, write for us again. And I thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Robert, and thank you for the wonderful opportunity to put that book out there. Be well.